Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back, KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 0.42% to 47,099. Ethereum up 1.82% to 3817. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I'd like to reach out and say a very special hello to three very special people, Ezekiel, Eden and Cruz. Hi everyone. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, I just want to let you know our community, our love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. The sun will come out again and there's always hope. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. As a community, we focus on real wealth and maintaining a positive excellence life trend. When you look at these boxes, it's quite interesting in a way. Why is a crypto trading channel talking about real wealth? It's all about emotional mastery. Just want to let the masterclass students know that the real wealth section is now open. When we talk about inner and outer peace, integrity, decency, kindness, these are all foundation concepts for building sustainable wealth. Not only that, but maintaining a real wealth attitude is critical to trading and investing from a professional mindset perspective. Also, there's a little bit more to it. Of course, crypto can create life-changing wealth, but what is that life? It should be meaningful and it should be rich with experience and connection with other people. When people maintain a positive excellence life trend, they experience happiness and realistically, that's what it's all about. Every trader and investor has to battle self-sabotage and self-doubt. There's a specific way that this can be battled. It's really by understanding how unique and how worthy you are as a human being. Your uniqueness will never be seen and has never been seen on this planet. You deserve kindness, love, meaning and every success in life, both financially and in terms of real wealth. To maintain that success, we must use kindness and integrity and decency or else any success will be very short lived. Rule 138, all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. Investors buy, traders buy, investors sell, traders sell. They're the same activity, just with slightly different perspectives. When people are attracted into the crypto market, they see really incredible percentage gains and they think it's a sure thing. They can't help but make money. These large percentages hide a dark secret. The percentages also are incredibly volatile to the negative side, to the downside. And that actually surprises a lot of people and can shake them out of their positions, creating losses. Professional traders and professional investors see fear very, very differently. When there's extreme fear in the market, that is actually when they're buying. This is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. It's currently registering fear. When we look at extreme levels of fear, this is absolutely the best time to get into the market and dollar cost average. The smart money mindset is completely different from the retail mindset. We apply patience and rules all the time. Rule 130, make volatility your best friend. Volatility is that really whipsaw positive and negative price momentum. We make, as professionals, as professional crypto technical analysts, we make volatility our friend. We love it when it happens. Also, crypto technical analysts understand how Bitcoin impacts the entire crypto market. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Bitcoin literally has a gravity. If Bitcoin moves up, the alts move up. If Bitcoin moves down, the alts move down, but to varying degrees. Sometimes we get crypto specific news that can pump an alt. 
even though Bitcoin is going down. And it can do exactly the same in the reverse direction. Just be careful of this. Not everything will go down, but about 99% will. Turning to the KS model, which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology, you can see the price of Bitcoin and of course crypto has been severely hit by a number of black swan incidences. For example, the China miner exodus, Evergrande, and a couple of other things, China's new laws. What we actually see is that the price, if we were to just go back from this current bull market cycle back into this one, we're looking at something like price is around here, perspectively. If we think about that, we can see that in the past, in the previous cycle, we had an exponential blow off top. We may get some sort of elongation, that is possible, but we're still expecting by May 2022, we're going to get a bit of an upshoot here. What we actually are looking for is price to cut through this green band. When price cuts through this green band, and we can see this green band is increasing, we'll get our exponential blow off top, like what we see here. Many people say that this is simply impossible to do. There's no way that price can forge up that quickly, that much. What they're actually missing is that crypto is an exponential asset. This is actually a log chart. You can see the log down here. Log charts measure equal percentage movements. So we can see price going up exponentially. This is exponential on exponential. It's literally mind blowing. This is what crypto does. But why? It's because of very fundamental and solid reasons. Bitcoin and the cryptographic alt ecosystem builds out to create the next level of the internet. The internet was on fire when Jeff Bezos was around and articles like this were published. We're seeing the same kind of funny business with <laughs> the crypto market. People are saying, oh, it can't go up. There's not enough money in the world. They don't understand market cap and how market cap actually works. You'll see many, many times, it doesn't take a dollar to build a dollar of market cap. Some market caps, you can put $1,000 in and they'll go up $1 million. It's really important to understand dollar value is very, very different. But if we look across the world and see just how much money there is, just in derivative contracts alone, there's one quadrillion dollars. Also, if we think about the size of the global stock market and the global bond market, crypto rising up a, a big percentage, taking out 10% of stocks and 10% of bonds, which it will do over time. Crypto will completely change the world, but yet people keep thinking in a retail mindset, not an institutional one. And that basically leads them down the wrong path. So yes, all of these probabilities are still in play. Also, when we look back to the previous bull run, we had a very turbulent time to the top. 20, 30, 40, even 50% reductions occurred. This is really important to understand. People get into a recency bias. They think that when price come down, comes down, it's just going to continue to come down. That is not institutional thinking. That is retail thinking. So how is Bitcoin going at the moment? It's currently trading at 47,189. It as, as we expected yesterday, it's come up across this once resistance line and seeking to turn it to support. It's looking fairly reasonable. What is happening here? We're getting positive air under these particular price actions. What does that actually mean? There are buyers down here. And the sellers, see, can, they can basically see the buyers and they say, hmm, I'm going to get more for what I want. If you think about it this way, if you're selling something and you can get $11 instead of 10, you would probably want $11. That is what's happening here. There's a tremendous amount of buyer support down this particular line, which will action out around the 45,400 mark. 
we also have a level of support coming in here that will action around the 46,000, say 200 mark. We also have our confluence of support at 45,881. We've got three levels of support playing in here. Of course, the price is actually reflecting that. Retail investors and traders have only one price direction in their mind at any time. It's either going up or it's going down. The concept is professional smart money mindset has three simultaneous price targets. They make in advance probabilistic choices. They know what they're going to do if price goes up, goes down or goes sideways. And they know it all the time and they stick to their guns as well in terms of executing their actions. For example, what would you do if price just cut through and collapsed down? Because it's crypto, it could. What would you do if price just went horizontal around the 47,800 mark? What would you do? And if price just shot up immediately and blew through this 55,590 mark, what would you do? It's really important to actually have answers to these questions. I created three color analysis to help people understand what was actually occurring inside the charts. A lot of times people would say, is it going up? Is it going down? I'm not quite sure. This three color analysis is here to help people. It's there to demystify crypto technical analysis. Based on an analysis of past movements, about the absolute maximum low or the minimum low, no maximum low, would be 47,406. That is potentially on the cards and people need to realize this. Crypto is so incredibly volatile. Look at this really huge down spike. That occurred within an eight hour window. And of course it reversed up. These are the things to understand with crypto. Just because we have a tail down here doesn't mean anything. This is crypto and the institutions love to push the price down. And people who have been with the community for a while know the 10, 5, 10 rule. When something is 10, it goes down to five. It's like a 50% reduction. But when it goes from five back up to 10, it's a 100% reduction. Institutions use this to their advantage to make at advantage returns all the time. That is why price is negatively biased. Now, this is a worst case scenario to go down to 37,400. What's a more likely scenario? A more likely scenario is that we start to get through this particular resistance here. The key is what are we actually seeing in this chart? I'll just zoom in here for you. When you look at this price action, what do you see? You can see a very definite level of resistance. Buyers have tried to push it through this 47,962 mark several times and it's been rejected, but it's coming up retesting, been rejected. We can see a little bit of negative air. We can see sellers are above here. This is what these tails mean, they're rejections. So what does this mean? There are a lot of sellers above this line. What else does it mean? When the buyers push through this level, there's probably a lot of short positions just around here. They will get liquidated. What happens then? Price can exponentially blow past these levels. That's why we see all sorts of really weird price action in crypto because it's all liquidation based. Basically, Smart money always hunts stops. We can see that there are definite stops above here. When those stops get liquidated, we'll see very explosive price action to the upside. If you witness this and you see this, you'll know what's happening. Let's just push that up. Now go the other way. If there are buyers here and we can see there's a lot of buyers, we've got positive air. We're reaching a place of fireworks that I would call it. A decision is going to be made inside the market. What happens if the price is pushed down? We could get a long tail rejection. Why? Because a lot of longs could have their stops underneath these support areas at around 45,000. If they do, it's possible that they could get liquidated. 
just pushing the price down. Now, what are the institutions going to do? They're going to lean into it and they're going to buy it. They want Bitcoin and they want it for as cheaply as they can possibly get it. Bitcoin is literally digital gold. You can see out of the total supply that will ever exist. It's not all out yet, but the concept in 2140, when it does come out, we only have 7% ownership across private and public countries and ETFs. 7%. Just think about it. These particular countries and companies and ETFs, for example, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, has $30.6 billion in Bitcoin. It wants more. It wants everything that it can lay its hands on. And Michael Saylor is the same for very, very good reasons. More and more countries will actually change their gold reserves to Bitcoin reserves. When that happens, there will be incredible pressure on prices. More and more public companies are starting to own Bitcoin and balance sheet it. It's just amazing what is going on. And don't forget too that many countries are opening up pension funds, retirement funds to Bitcoin exposure. We can see that Bitcoin is an in-demand asset. From that perspective, when we look at price action like this, we're seeing that institutions have tremendous interest. Institutional thinking is all about buying at these suppressed prices. They're just basically suppressing it at the moment. I don't know your investment objectives and how much money you have and what you want to put in the market and your risk tolerances and a lot of other things, but I can share what I'm doing. I'm leaning into the market. I feel by looking at the technicals, things are starting to turn around. And this comes at a time when Delta and C19 is running rampant across the world. We've got Evergrande. We've got so many issues playing out that they will bamboozle normal retail investors and the institutions will also be leaning in to accumulate. Speaking about Omicron, the late, latest figures are 408,237 confirmed cases. With the major countries, the UK, Denmark, the US, Germany, Canada, Norway and France, our thoughts are with everybody. We can see that from a lockdown perspective, we have some countries increasing their stringency, but others not. Around the world, there's 290.439 million C19 cases. And we can see there's been a very large spike in the number of new infections. Fortunately, the death rate has not reflected that spike. I've had certain members of the community infected with the Omicron variant reach out and they say it's not so bad. And that's really, really good. That is our hope and that is our prayer. We always suffer the weekend effect across weekends. So just understanding that 700,000 new cases overnight is just pretty much what happens on the weekends. We don't have any movement on these transport indexes, but what we can actually see, and the masterclass students have this particular chart when you're up to it, you can see that the airlines index is turning around. The transport indexes have rebounded. The NASDAQ is just testing its support. The masterclass students also have this inflation chart. We can see break even five year and 10 year inflation is coming up. This is really good for Bitcoin. Bitcoin loves inflation. And we can see that in all probability, we're going to get an upward tick here. The only real elephant in the room is the Chinese property market. When we look at Evergrande, Fantasia, Cynic, Kaiser, Greenland, Country Garden and Banky, these seven companies have net debt of over $1 trillion. We just look at the stock market prices for these seven companies to understand what is actually happening. The masterclass students also have this particular chart when you get up to it. And please believe me, there is no rush. Just always get your foundations really, really solid. What we can see is these seven. This is Evergrande, this blue line. The other six 
are starting to consolidate down. There's a bit of weakness among some, but predominantly there's upward price momentum. Even in Evergrande, which is this blue line, we're seeing a bit of a kick up. What does that actually mean? Investors are feeling more and more confident that there will be a CCP bailout. That's a really important thing to understand. The share price will tell us what actually is happening. Smart money is always behind. They have footprints in every chart. So whilst the news may actually issue many, many sensationalistic headlines like the end of the world, we can see through the actual stock market that is not the case. There's also something that we need to keep in mind between stocks and bonds and crypto. Crypto is highly speculative. That's why it's got so much volatility. Stock market is less volatile. In fact, the crypto market is open five times longer than the stock market. Crypto never sleeps. Stock market is rarely open in comparison. What we see with the bond market, bond prices are a flight to safety. If the bond market goes up, the price of bonds goes up. We can see that money is flowing out of crypto and stocks into bonds. Let's check it out quickly. Masterclass students also have this particular chart when you're up to it. We can see that the VIX, the volatility index, has been coming down. Fear is leaving the market. What are we also seeing? The NASDAQ 100 is just consolidating at its support level. Very, very reasonable price action. The price of oil has passed across several resistance levels and is going up. What is this blue line in the background? That's actually Bitcoin's price action. We can see, for example, that bond prices are still under resistance. If everything was going basically into the toilet, technical term, you could say that bond prices would be shooting above, that we'd be going straight up the wall because all the smart money would be fleeing the stock market and crypto, simply not happening. Let's have a look at the yields, the bond yields, which move inversely to the price. What we can see is we've had a double bounce, a double confirmation of support and a bounce up. Price is always moving in a way, so it doesn't just go all up or just go all down. We can also see that gold is on the rise. This could be because of several issues. War and disease always plays a part, as does demand from jewelry. We can see there's an increase. We need to watch this one. It can be kind of a leading indicator. But again, we don't panic. We just trade the probabilities that we stack. What are we seeing? Bond prices under resistance, market rallying, fear coming out, bond yields actually increasing, which is really, really good for Bitcoin. The DXY decreasing. All in all, it's same day, different day, but we've got positive signs in the market. So in looking at all of this, what do we conclude for Bitcoin? We conclude that there's nothing systemically altered inside the market. If anything, things are on the repair. The potential for upward price momentum is definitely there. Just like in life, rule 28 is so critically important. Opportunities reset daily. Every day is a new opportunity and it's a beautiful way to look at life as well. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Yesterday is done and dusted. We focus on today. Being a crypto technical analyst is really cool. It's all about mastery of emotional state, fearlessness. It's a beautiful, beautiful area to be involved with. Looking at the first aid, we can see Bitcoin is just consolidating above that support. And as Bitcoin consolidates, what are the alts doing? The alts are starting to gather some degree of momentum. This is fantastic to look at. Ethereum starting to come up. Binance coin starting to come up. Remember the directional bias of Bitcoin is what's important here. We can see Solana starting to come up. Also Cardano, but ADA is still under resistance. XRP is starting to come up as well. Potentially what we have here, this is a low, this is a low for XRP. 
and this is a higher low. We may be seeing the formation of an upward trend line here, just the very start, the very beginning. A baby trend line. We can see it playing out on quite a few alts. Have a look at Dot. Dot is starting to party. Well done, Dot. Luna never stop partying. Luna is just crazy. It just wants to fly. Looking at the next date, we can see Doge starting to get above this resistance line and starting to form a potential support pattern here. Go Doge! AVAX looking really good. SHIB is looking very interesting actually. I'm going to start layering into SHIB here. It could be a little bit wobbly, but I think it could have some fantastic upside potential. Just always be guided by what you do. If you're an investor, you may or may not want to get into SHIB. I'm a trader, so I'm just giving you a heads up. This looks very, very interesting. So what do you do? Do you FOMO in if you wanted to? Do you do that? No, we always buy in layers. Does that mean you could miss some layers? Absolutely. That's where patience and discipline comes in. SHIB and DOGE are very spiky by nature. They can come up and down. Let's have a look at Matic. Matic is also looking really good. It's looking to consolidate around this 253 level. Don't forget that crypto is volatile. It can go up and down. It could, for example, Matic could slice through these different support lines quite easily. So we never ever FOMO. We just look at it and say, yeah, we have patience and we have a lot of discipline. You can see how critically important it is to have discipline because if you don't, you'll just buy at market and you'll end up wasting a lot of money. We can see Litecoin, it's under resistance but starting to turn around slowly. Go Litecoin! Uni is still under resistance but forming a higher low. This is why we look through the crypto market in this depth in a depth that nobody else looks at because we're trying to get some kind of feeling what is the market doing is the market falling over is it forming higher lows is it forming lower lows we really need to know that's why we don't just look at our beloved alts we go wide algo is starting to look good but it's going to come up to this level of resistance at 190 just be aware of that whoa good on your chain link we can see a higher low forming. You can see the patterns forming across many, many different charts. We can see that there's been a very steep angle down. We would expect a reflection at some point. Turning to the next date, we can see Bitcoin Cash is under resistance. Tron is showing weakness. This is a lower low here. This is a different kind of pattern. This is a weaker pattern than the other ones. Decentraland, MANA, starting to accumulate along that support line. Nice. We always anticipate long tail rejections. We don't FOMO. Axie Infinity looking nice as well. Just a little bit weaker than what MANA is looking. And we always anticipate that we can get lower lows. Stellar, starting to make its way up. Go Stellar! Then v chain starting to show some strength, starting to bottom out. I believe we're going to see a turnaround in the crypto market. It's probably going to catch a lot of people off guard. We can see Cosmos. It looks really good. Adam is on the way up. It will be coming back to test this upward support line. We can see FTT starting to turn around, but not as strongly as some of the other cryptos. You always want to go for strength. Johnny, yesterday in the comments section on YouTube, had a really good question. Hi Ken, I have a question. If we are currently in a crypto that is under resistance, is it better to get out of it and scale in on a stronger pattern in another crypto? I find it, <laughs> I find it harder to sell when price is cheaper, even if I am in profit. I guess it depends on if it is in my trading or, or investing portfolio and my trading skills. I saw myself more as an investor, but I want to put more into my trading portfolio. Thank you, Johnny, for your question. I'll seek to answer it by just giving a little bit of background. 
I put KS own analysis together to explain the four stages that every single investor, novice, retail, all the way up to professional and institutional, they all go through these four stages. Stage one is the panic zone. Stage two is the blame zone. This is all about certainty. This is all about what I would call perfect timing. Perfect timing does not exist in any market, especially crypto. Zones three and four are about probability and rules and a lot of patience. Zones one and two suffer what's called the light switch effect. That's where people want to go all in or all out. They want to hit the middle of the bullseye on the dartboard every single time and have perfect timing no matter what. Pick the exact tops to sell, the exact bottoms to buy. It's really very, very difficult and no professional would ever try. We use probabilistic fearlessness instead in zones three and zones four to actually scale in and scale out. Now, coming back to Johnny's comment, which is a really, really good comment. This is why mindset is so critically important. What we could say, if for example, a person was in uni and just say they were in profit at the moment, if they light switch from, for example, from uni into Matic and they say, look, this is great. Matic is going up. I need to get in. I'll just buy at market and I'll sell everything I have and come across and put something in Matic or put it all in Matic from uni. What we do professionally, we have a very, very different mindset. Everything is in layers. If you're in profit, that's good. You want to be in profit before you sell anything. You want to try and keep away from selling anything that's in a loss position. If you're at spot and you can afford to hold on, absolutely do so. There are certain times that you will be selling at a loss, but that's more about taxation than about anything else. What you could say here is you can always layer out. For example, if you were in uni and you said, I really want to get into Matic, you could take a percentage of that particular position, just liquidate it at the higher buy level, always seeking to maximize opportunities. And you could just come in here seeking to buy it at lower. Now, this is really interesting because a lot of retail thinking is about, I'm going to miss out, I'm going to miss out. And that is what you can see it across YouTube. All those screaming faces and really weird thumbnails with mouths open and skulls and all sorts of things are actually just adding to that kind of hysteria. Professional traders are very in control, absolute emotional mastery. We look at something like this and we say, OK, I could put a percentage of what I want to trade in around the current price and layer the rest down. And there's many ways to do your layering. The critical thing, we don't light switch. It's not like something is bad, something is good. We just go into the good one. What you will find is always prices moving in a wave. It's always going up and down. You want to just try and get in sync with that wave. The key is always making it in advance probabilistic choices. It's really difficult when you come from one mindset into the probabilistic choice mindset. It's a bit of a learning curve and you literally need to short circuit your emotional responses. That's what I go through in the masterclass. The critical thing, if you want to scale out of one weaker into one stronger, just use your patience, your rules and your probabilistic fearlessness. It's really important. Please don't get up here into this certainty, perfect timing, light switch effects. You want to get in here with the scale in and scale out and just use a percentage of your overall portfolio to get familiar with things. Turning to the next day, we can see EGLD starting to consolidate along that support level. That's quite good. ICP is still under resistance. You can always make money from any particular crypto. It just literally depends where you buy and where you sell. That's kind of a, yeah, of course, can kind of comment. But it's really important to know that the probabilities are that we'll have a lot of sellers along this resistance line. 
So it will potentially be a capped run up to this resistance and then may reject down. If you look at ICP over time, it doesn't have a good fundamental chart. It's not looking healthy as a particular crypto from a crypto technical analyst perspective. We always like to see power. Now, when we look at sand, our goal is to actually pick things like sand before they blow up. And there are specific ways that you can do that. When we look at sand, we can see basically that it's hovering around a potential support area and just consolidating, just starting to move over resistance. This looks quite good. Filecoin still under resistance. Many retail investors, when they get in, they will get attracted to something like ICP and file and the money will get bled out of them. This is why we always say, please go for strength. Institutional thinking, the institutional one thinking and smart money thinking always seeks to follow strength in the market because while we may get a bounce from something like ICP here, the bounce that we can get from strong performing cryptos will outweigh it 10 to 1. We can see Filecoin under resistance, HBAR starting to turn around. This looks quite interesting. We can see Theta starting to consolidate along that support line. We would expect to play if Bitcoin's price improves and the probability is that it will do that. We would imagine that Theta could actually come up and attack this 6682 mark. But always remember, there's no certainty in the crypto market. Have your three-way decision making at all times, no matter what alt you're looking at. We can see Ethereum Classic still under quite a degree of resistance. Near is gone far, but wherever you are near, it looks like you're having a bit of trouble going further. We're very patient as professional traders and investors. We buy at support levels. We don't have FOMO and we ignore FUD. We just go independently of the market. Let's have a look at our community favorites. We can see VRA still under resistance. We can see Icon on the other side of its support. A big spike up here, a resistance level hit and coming back to support. This is all pretty much normal price action. A lot of different things can be ascribed to why cryptos do what they do. But in the end of the day, this is actually what all cryptos do. They're incredibly volatile. CRV still moving up. We've got a little bit of a wobble here, but it's certainly looking good. IOTA consolidating around its support line. Stacks looking very, very effective from a technical perspective. Ah, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. RLC still under resistance. We can see audio making a higher low and we can see these higher lows playing all out in the crypto space just literally across pretty much every single crypto cartesi is by nature explosive when cartesi wants to party it really parties that means it takes off in a positive direction it can also take off in a negative direction but usually cryptos go up the lift and down the stairs I think Nier and Cartesi are spiking together. They can be very, very profitable things to trade. And if you look at Bitcoin's fingerprint, that blue line in there, you can see it's literally following price action as, and this is for all cryptos, as Bitcoin starts to turn around, all of the alts will start to party. Go Bitcoin, come on, you can do it. We had some really beautiful comments in the community from yesterday's video. We were talking about gratitude. I just want to reach out to Brad. It's very lovely, the thing that you wrote. Hi, Ken and KS community. I'm grateful for our community, Ken and the Masterclass, and my loving family. Despite their ill health, I feel blessed to have my parents, and I feel hopeful for a real wealth future. Brett, all of our thoughts and love are with you, and of course with your parents. Wrecked is such a character. I'm grateful for finding this channel, what a gem. But Ken, I have such a hard time making volatility my best friend, if that means pushing you down to second spot. 
Oh, wrecked. I want to thank everybody in our community, our very precious community, for all their very insightful and interesting comments. I really love exploring different topics and coming together as a community to actually chat about those is just fantastic. I thought today what we could do is think about patience. What does patience mean to you, especially when it comes to the crypto market and trading and investing? It's a really, really important topic. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.